Hey everyone, welcome back to the Outside Vibe. And as you might know, I've been riding Rocky Mountain bikes my whole life. Our family has, they're great bikes. But recently I got a full suspension, the Rocky Mountain Altitude, and it was a great bike while it lasted. But it had a cracked frame on the head tube, so it was a bad position to be in, and I've needed a new bike for a long time. But today, it has finally become, because I have the brand new, Rocky Mountain Instinct A10. So I'm gonna walk you guys through it and we're gonna do a ride test. So the story behind this bike is, when to Nashville, our local Rocky Mountain dealer, well, mainly two and a half hours away, but um, they had the large frame, that's what I run, because it'll last me a long time since I'm young still. Um, and we got it. It's I've had it for about three weeks now. It's pretty sweet. I've been riding it a little. Only take it on the trails once at Angel Mounds us, but we're hopefully gonna get out the scales or been off sometime to try it. And uh, so the specs on this bike are pretty good actually for the level of build it is. It's got a Rock Shock Recon in the front with a compression adjustment and a Rock Shock Deluxe Select with rebound adjustments and everything. It doesn't have a lockout though, which is a little bit of a con, but for this bike, it's pretty good and uh, it's got Tektro hydraulic brakes. They're 180 mil rotors. It's not super powerful, but for the terrain I live in, it's pretty good. It's got a Shimano Dior 11 speed drivetrain, which is really good. It feels like a 12 speed and it's super smooth shifting. I have no complaints about that. It's got a really good drop post. I, it's, I think it's 175 mil and it works pretty well. I've, it's got the Canadian shield to protect from any sticks or leaves from getting trapped in between the rear triangle and the front. It's got the love the ride shield on the bottom of the, the down tube to protect it. Uh, I've got a Rocky Mountain bars. That's what it comes with stock. Uh, they're 700 mils wide, so about 31 inches around that. And uh, the the tires are the WTB Rangers. That's the only one of the biggest complaints I had is that they didn't do Maxis on it because these just don't get enough grip on any higher model though you can get with that. So that's a con that they did that. I'm gonna upgrade to probably a Maxxis dissector in the front and a recon race in the rear to get it some fast rolling. So now my setup on this bike, so I'm running a little bit stiffer in the front to give me uh, support on those big impacts. Uh, the rear I've used actually most of my travel on it, which I'm surprised about, especially around here. But the stiff suspension doesn't have any pedal bob, which is really nice. I like that, my brakes I'm running a little bit higher. That way for when I get in the steep terrain, I'm comfortable and everything. My shifter, I'm just riding a normal setup on it. Um, I'm riding the race face chesters on it. I might upgrade some clipless in the future, but that's pretty much it. The wide bars will give me stabilization on downhills. I'm riding my saddle slightly farther forward for more weight on the front wheel and uh, my handlebars are tilted slightly more forward to give me that extra weight for climbing. I'm also riding a little bit stiffer wheels about 25 to 30 psi to give me more roll. Uh, I might change that because it feels kind of rough when I go over some bumps. I've also got my ride nine step going on the sixth position because that gives me a little bit of steeper head tube angle but the position three is also a progressive setup. So it gives me a little bit progressive suspension and a steeper head tube angle, which is good for the type of racing I do. I've also got the two axle position adjustment in the rear, but the second position or the far one is pretty long and it's probably mainly for steep, fast downhills when you're in the World Cup, kind of like that. The bike also weighs around 35.2 pounds. That's uh, about average, so for a really, it's a really good climber for its weight. Okay, so we're out scales now, and uh, it's time to try out the new bike. Okay, guys, we're gonna hit the main line here. It's pretty fun. Well, we're gonna warm up on this thing. Poppy.
Nice. All right, gonna hit the pro line or do the slalom. Probably black features. Ooh, nice manual. Nice. That was some good riding. Oh yeah. stable through high speed and it's really playful actually perfect for jumping cliff side section Sketch at the beginning. Doc. The wide bars, I've got 31 inch on here. This section has a lot of tight spots. Those 31 inch handlebars don't fit through thin skinny trees though. There it is, I see it. Yeah, how smooth. Feel it glide through these rooty sections. Just those 29 inch wheels make a huge difference. You wouldn't think so, just one and a half inches. So I'll link again. Hoover Hill. All time favorite downhill here at Scales Lake. And uh, it's got some pretty good drops at high speed. So let's get it. In here. Bike felt pretty comfortable on that. Woo. Hoover Hill. There you go. The bike felt, bike felt so comfortable on that downhill. It was very stable. One of the most stable bikes I've done that. Because, uh, the long wheelbase and uh, 29 inch tires just all over that and the progressive suspension is perfect. Jedi, Jedi. Steve up and down. Double. I did a good job with that. Oh. 
Oh, finally got that again. I haven't gotten that since like November. It's March. Bike feels really consistent. Bike is very responsive. Goat time. I don't know how these 3110 handlebars will hold up through this. This is it. Oh. Bike carries good flow. That's part of the stiffer suspension setup for me. red line. Here on the jump. Nice. That burn was sick. Oh, look at that jump. Nice. So now we're gonna test it on some high speed sinkhole too. We got a bunch of berms, jumps, and then some long straights. Let's test this guy's speed. There we go. Getting some good grip with these tires to the berm, surprisingly. There's jump. Oh, that's hard, that step up. You have to get a crank in at least.
here come big bull berm. Scrub. Nice. Felt so smooth. Here we go. Sinkhole. Done. One last thing I want to try on this bike. Steep stuff. This is pretty steep corner going into an exit. That's it. Nice. Felt really stable. I felt confident on that. Like, I was in charge, but you don't want to get too much prideful. Pride comes before the fall, as the proverbs say. So the pros of this bike are pretty obvious. Um, the internal cable ratting is so clean right now, and uh, it's a big, big plus, especially for an aluminum bike. That makes a big difference, and uh, the predictability on the jumps. It's just so... I know what it's gonna do and it didn't buck me at all on any takeoffs and it handled it it like is so playful actually the thing is this bike is super stable and playful which is like hard to get out of a bike so Rocky Mountain did a great job with that how it handles steep stuff and big downhills it incredible like Cooper Hill I didn't bottom out my suspension which is pretty crazy because of how fast that downhill is you're going like 20 miles per hour on it so that's a great plus for it and i mean the tunability of this bike the adjustability from the suspension and geometry is incredible i mean my the right nine step it can be set up for an xc racing or enduro it's crazy i mean it changes the head tube by a lot drastic amount so it's just an incredible thing to have for a, a trail bike for, like this so those are the main pros for me. I mean, there's a couple of cons to go over. So let me start off with the first one. And that is the tires. That is the biggest problem for me. For this bike, if you're a racer, they're pretty good tires, especially for XC. But this is an all mountain bike, not an XC bike. And um, the tires just don't get the job done. A Max Minion DHF would be way better for this bike. As I mentioned before, you can get this on any other model above though. Another con is the brakes though. The 180 millimeter uh, rotors do not get the job done on the downhills. For this bike, you can't really get a bigger size rotor for any of the bikes, which is a con. So I definitely recommend looking into that. The altitude though does come with a larger rotor, so that's nice. And um, last con for me, I think it's kind of a picky one, is the shock. They didn't give a lockout adjustment on it, so for this bike, that's kind of annoying, but it's not a big con as long as you set it up right. But other than that, those are the only cons I have. The bike is overall super great and smooth. It just rides brilliant for the Rocky Mountain did a great job at designing this bike. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm really enjoying this bike. I've been on it for about a month now. I've got all dialed in my settings and it's so playful, it's super nice, it's got a good grip. It's starting to get nice outside, so mountain bike season's just beginning. Can't wait to ride this thing some more and sh shred with you guys. We'll see ya.